Uh, so today uh, we're going to have a bit of a squeeze at uh, Travis and Network Adjustments and TBC. Um, so my name's Peter May, I'm one of the technical consultants at uh, UPG uh, in Sydney. Uh, I was a land surveyor for 14 years before uh, about six months ago moving over to UPG and, and performing uh, these wonderful feats of um, uh, presentations uh, and, and training. So uh, if you've got any questions as we sort of go along, please place them into the the uh, IM box um, and I will open up the floor at the end for anybody to ask any questions if you've got anything. Uh, also at the end, um, my email address and the contact numbers will be there. So if you've got any questions, um, current projects you're working on and things like that that you've, you know, want some help with, um, please give us a get in contact um, and uh, we'll you know, try and give you a bit of help. Alrighty, um, so let's dive in into, into the, the Travis and network adjustments. So Trimble Business Center um, being Trimble's flagship uh, office software for geospatial, um, so for surveyors and also construction um, people. Uh, we will look at this more from a geospatial perspective. Obviously this is very geospatial, but it's again, uh, just looking at it in the sense of a, a Travis. We're not going to look at baseline processing. Um, if we, we run another session um, on baseline, GPS baseline processing, we'll also run in uh, that network adjustment package as well, just to sort of see how that sort of flows through the workflow from baseline processing and then into the network adjustments. So just to kick off, uh, the Travis adjustments, we'll have a bit of a squeeze at um, how TBC can do it. TBC can, can import the data, it can edit the data, yeah, and it can create and adjust to Travis's uh, in the Office software. Now, it, it'll give you a, an adjustment report but at the end of it, telling you, obviously, your positional misclose, your angular misclose, and then all the other ratios and everything like that. That can be then saved as part of your QA process for if you're you know, land surveyor and you've got to provide evidence to, to show that you're, you're completing your accuracies of your, your surveys to a certain tolerance, um, like we do here in New South Wales. Uh, we have to keep those records, and I'm sure there's a lot of others, uh, keep those records so that we, we know that 100% that everything's within a certain tolerance and ratio. Um, now, the way TBC looks at Travis adjustments, uh, you obviously will have to start and end on a known station, or at least you'll have to have some connection to a start and an end station. But in a typical Travis, you'll start uh, on, on one, one point, you'll Travis through, and then you'll, you'll most likely then finish on that same point. So in the example on the right-hand side, uh, we would set up at station one, we'd backsite station three, we then Travis through five, going anti-clockwise to six, uh, connection back to one. Now that will give us our uh, positional misclose, but obviously we want angular. So we then reset back on one, site six, and then back, and then site to three as a foresight, and then turn that final angle. Um, now everything, the way it looks at the intermediate stations, there are all the others that are related to it, and you can be linked in and have an intermediate station and then connect to an end station, but that'll be where you'll you'll be able to you know, calculate your uh, distance misclose, or if you, for instance, uh, end on a known point that's not occupied, you will obviously be only able to get a um, an angular misclose. But ideally, we really like to, to keep it as the conventional. Travis, it makes it nice and easy for everybody, um, and it's um, better for the program to be able to calculate everything you want. Uh, you can obviously change, change up your Travis. Uh, and set up on one back site three, site six and five. So turn that angle. Um, so turn you know, all three at once and then traverse through, finish on six, back site to one and have that as your closing line. But ideally you'd want to have a closing line. Now the network adjustment, this is the, the least squares side of um, TBC and looking at traverses and um, adjustments. So we, the network adjustment will perform that least squares adjustment of a, of a network of observations, and it could be uh, GNSS baselines, could be Travis, could be RTK, uh, it could be some level data in there, and you can do it all, all in one hit. Uh, so you don't have to do little bits and pieces here and there. You can do uh, everything in one hit. If you were doing a, a Travis adjustment, you can only do one loop. Uh, and then from there, you'd have to go off and do another loop, and then you have another loop. And so you'd have all these little loops everywhere with potential miscloses and accuracies. But 
a network adjustment looks at everything in a whole, all the observations to all the connections uh, and being able to come up with a, a better solution. Now, the purpose of the adjustment is to, to estimate and remove the random errors that we might have, uh, provide a single solution, you know, with all the data instead of, you know, having as I said, those little loops, um, minimise the corrections to the observations, uh, detect the blunders, so looking at how your, your ratios and your uh, standardised residuals fall out at the end and, you know, generate some, some statistical um, information that you can then store as a bit of a, uh, a reference for later. Uh, so going back and giving a little bit of a, uh, a rundown on what we would sort of be looking at for a network adjustment. Ideally, we're looking for a reference factor of, of one and a chi-squared test pass um, value. If, if it sort of doesn't go through that and you, you, for instance, get a value that's less than one, we've sort of underestimated the accuracies and we might need to come back through and sort of tweak our figures, uh, our standard um, standard deviations and um, work out what potentially we, we could have done. So we, for instance, we may have surveyed better than we're currently quoting and you, for instance, get a value less than one. Um, but then on the other side, if you've surveyed worse, you'll get a value of one. Uh, and that could be where you've either overstated your accuracies. And for instance, you said you, you know, one second uh, when it's actually a five second jigger, uh, or for instance, you've blown it out to, to 10 seconds because you, you know, weren't citing it correctly and your instrument wasn't in adjustment and all those other sorts of bits and bobs. Um, at the same time, as it could be that you've got an error in there, which could be that, you know, pole height was wrong or you're, uh, you had the wrong prism constant or, or something like that. Or again, there's not enough redundancy um, and you, know, you might need to add some other observations in there to sort of help bulk it out to, to help it get, get across the line. Uh, so chi-square is the overall statistical test of, of the network. Uh, it looks at the sum of the weighted squares of the residuals, the degrees of freedom, and also the, the critical percentage as it meets against the 95% uh, confidence interval. Uh, I'll show you all that in the back end of the software and sort of where to see all that um, in a second. Um, a lot of it's set up in your project settings. So if you've got a good template already set up for your projects, you could have a template that is for your network adjustments that set up all your constraints and everything. Um, or, you know, for instance, you could have one that's for everything and, you know, for detail surveys and network adjustments and, you know, you know, you name it, it can do it. Um, but it's all going to be sitting there, but you will and probably will have to tweak some of those settings depending upon, you know, what results you get out. So our Travis and Network scenario, uh, we here in, in Macquarie Park, which is where I'm, I'm located today, uh, we have a, a small little um, field uh, that was really good for performing a, a little bit of a, a survey. So down Fontenoy Road, uh, back across to Rogal, up to the north, and then sort of close it back off. Um, uh, you know, I didn't do very well as a surveyor because the I've set, 180 degrees out when I've uh, uh, when I've started my survey from PGA one to one, so everything's 180 degrees. Well done to me. Um, uh, everyone else who's a surveyor is having a bit of a giggle at me, I'm sure. Um, so the survey was done with a, an S5 uh, three second total station uh, with a mini prism only. Uh, I want to do the survey to try and introduce as much error as possible and when we start looking at the results you'll sort of be able to see um, where some of the errors might be or errors aren't. Um, so I'll, we'll have a bit of a squeeze at that and, and see, see what we've you know, come up with. Obviously angular error accuracy is three seconds, uh, distance accuracy is one millimetre plus two parts uh, per million, so we're we're pretty happy with the the EDM side of it. Uh, so we'll see how we we sort of go and and go from there. So I wanted to sort of just give you a bit of screenshots of our project settings that we'd sort of be wanting to look at. Um, now, this is very much horses for courses, and really does de it depend on how your your survey instrument is set up and how your office software is set up. Now, your standard 
errors that are shown on the left hand side of the screen at the moment. You, your instrument can be pre-set up with in your survey styles and in your settings um, of your Trimble Access Controller. You can have that stuff already set up, pre-done. Uh, you know it's a three second jigger. You can set up your uh, errors in centering, your error in the standard, other other standard errors are all based off what, what comes in from the total station observations in your .job file. At the same time as you can set it to what I have currently presented as a project settings only and it'll be based off the settings set in the standard deviation or the, the standard errors section in your total stations um, which is set below it which is to the right hand side of the screen. Now I myself like to have more control over it so I'll, I'll like to set everything based on the project settings um, in the project and I can then have a bit more handle on the, on the actual survey itself, on the results, how things are tweaking. I can tweak the, um, the angular distances, the angular uh, horizontal and vertical angles to sort of suit what I want to see, which I might get through in the, you know, waiting side of it later on. Um, it, it's sort of, yeah, horses for courses. Some people like to have a set instrument. I like to do it with project. I like a little bit more control over it instead of what might be preset by somebody else. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you go through level photogrammetry, GNSS, azimuth, they will all be set. Uh, you can then set all of those as well to whatever values you want. You might have a, um, a set that you need to have. Um, go through, tweak them. I know TMR have a, a really good a little manual that they've pre prepared that has all the different values that they will use um, for, for doing what they need to do. So TMR is the Queensland um, main roads. Uh, so if you've got something you, you know, have a bit of a squeeze, search the internet, that's, that stuff's out there. Um, if you're sort of interested in knowing what some of those authorities are using for these sorts of things. Um, now moving again through the project settings, we sort of jump back up uh, in our tab to the computations. Now looking at mean angles and, and traverses, the, this is more what we presented and what's flagged in TBC when you initially start it, load the, the, the data in and it will flag anything that's sort of outside these values and these tolerances um, from anything else that's sort of computed. Uh, so these mean turned angles are, are not, they're all turned, they're actually physically turned angles and then calculated from all those observations when it's loaded in to TBC. Um, and again, we'll show you that right inside of the screen, our project settings for Travis. Uh, I've left these as default, I haven't tweaked them. Uh, it's really up to, to you and, and again, your settings and where you are uh, in relation to the world. Uh, it could be that you're in New South Wales and you've got our settings here that's set by our um, survey regs in 2017, or it could be that you're you know, in Victoria uh, and you've got another thing or you're in uh, you know, Germany, for instance. And again, there's a different, different value that's set by your authority um, that you would sort of have to follow against when you're doing your traverses and what you, when you, what you want to see when you're reporting that data. Uh, so moving forward now uh, to the network adjustment side of things, uh, that's a little bit further down in the tab. The a couple of changes here that that are, I will note. Um, I myself run with a uh, include side shots into my network adjustment because I I want to actually adjust out all those network all those side shots at the same time as I also want to add in the. I may have shot to, for instance, an SSM, which is our state survey mark here in here in Sydney or in New South Wales. Um, I might have shot to it, I couldn't travis to it. I couldn't actually get direct um, travis to it. So I've just turned it in uh, and I may have done it from two different stations. Uh, so I wanna add side shots like that in to, cause it's not actually a travis point. Uh, and if, for instance, I may actually hold one of them as my fixed point and give it a standard deviation, um, you know, so on and so forth. As, how, how I'm feeling related to that. Uh, further down in the terrestrial tab, mean mean angles. Now this can be set to uh, using mean angles observations, or you can set it to using individual observations. Uh, the big difference here would be when the network adjustment goes through and runs the data, the mean angles will be, if it's got it set to mean angles, it will only use the mean angles uh, for calculation of your network adjustment. 
I would like to see all of the observations um, and how they all fall out. And it could be that there might be one in there that is flagged as being uh, an outlier. So if you've obviously turned six rounds, you know, if you're an uh, RMS surveyor here in, in New South Wales, you might turn six rounds to everything. And you'll, for instance, want to, uh, you might want to throw one of those rounds out because it, you know, was, it's throwing everything else out of the, um, out of the ballpark. So you, you might tweak that and then it'll help your adjustment in the statistics down the other end. Uh, right hand side of the screen, we are looking at our um, convergence display. So this is just the display of how everything's going to be set up um, when you look at it. So I've set it to parts per million uh, and then I've also got it set to the Canadian uh, propagation of error. There's a whole bunch of other settings in there. It's again horses of course is what you want to see um, but I'll sort of show you what that looks like as we move on forward. And then obviously our very important confidence interval. Uh, this is set down in our standard errors section um, of our project settings and we can set it to obviously 99% or a one sigma. Um, I We just run with 95% confidence interval because that is the, the the standard, the minimum that um, we're sort of needing uh, here in New South Wales. So I'll, I'll leave that as the setting. Okay, well that comes to the end of the actual uh, PowerPoint side of things. Let's jump into uh, a little bit of Trimble Business Centre. So uh, up on your screen at the moment you should be seeing um, the uh, a Travis network, um, very similar to uh, what you saw in one of the previous slides. Um, the something to, to you know as we spoke about earlier was some of the flags. So down the down the bottom of the screen at the moment, um, if you can't see it or don't know where to find it, there's a little icon down in the, the toolbar down the bottom. Uh, it's called the, the the flag pane icon. Uh, click that on and you'll be able to see any of the flags that are presented a on the screen in your plan view at the same time as a bit of information about what some of them are. Now uh, in our project settings earlier I set that our uh, mean turned angle horizontal and vertical was three seconds uh, and you can see there that it started to throw out some that, it, that have a, a little bit higher than three seconds. Um, again for my network adjustment I'm not going to use that information I'm going to use individual OBS anyway but for our Travis adjustment it will use the MTA. Uh, data. So you can see some of the five seconds, you know, three seconds. I can go through and change those settings and make those flags go away. Uh, at the same time as you can just turn them off. Um, you don't need to do anything with them. They're only there to tell you that there might be something that's not 100% kosher with the settings you've preset up. Okay, so uh, that's the flags uh, points. Now we can see, uh, obviously we have a whole bunch of points. Um, some are uh, actual points which have been keyed in and then some are, are just observation points, these smaller ones uh, around the outside are just the observation points. We have our uh, radial lines or our observation lines, um, total station observations which you can see here um, shown in green and then dark green for the single lob down there back to PGO1. Uh, if you want to see the direction of travel arrows or the, the direction of the observation, you can go and change that through your pro program settings, or oh, sorry, pro program options. Uh, it's in there. You can set it to being able to see those value, those if you would like to do that. Okay. Now, just a, a little side note, uh, just so that you don't get confused. These little lines, um, these observation lines, they're not, not actually a line that you can export. It's just an observation line that you can switch off in your view filter uh, and it's it's just showing you the raw observations. So if you click on one of them and view the total station observation, it'll show you some of your observed data, what the horizontal angle uh, circle reading was, the vertical circle reading, so obviously this is a face right ob, um, you know, slope distance raw, there's your face right com confirmation, uh, what I was citing and then it's obviously computed horizontal angle uh, it's azimuth and you know, going forward from there with all the other computed data. Now that's just for the observation itself and it's not an adjusted data. So if we go back and look at this later on, uh, after we've done our network adjustment, these values will still be the same. They won't change, but the values between the points when computing 
using a, a, a measure function or an inverse function, they will be different because they'll be based off coordinates. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up as a, because that came up as one of our questions last time we ran this session. Um, I just wanted to yeah, make sure that everyone sort of gets that and knows that. Uh, the observations um, that you see on the screen at the moment are based all off one point at the moment. So this point here, PGO1, which is my starting station, uh, it actually has um, in the, the project, so if I go through in our Project Explorer and I have a look at that point, I will be able to see that that point was the first station and it has an editable Eastings, Northings and ele elevation. Uh, PG, PG08 for some reason is also the same and it's probably the fact that I've called it um, from another, from a file um, as I've gone and done my survey. So it's, it's called that one up and um, given it the same value. You can also view that information in your total station editor, go through total station and click the, the dot job file that you you had and then for instance if I go into here it is here that's my start station my starting station starting station um, and again you go back through and have a look at um, you know that stuff's fixed it won't you won't be able to observe that but then here's all your obs that, that were completed so if you ever need it need to sort of go back through and look at your job that's another way of doing it there's your your target height you can see I was running at a weird target height with a with a little mini prism um, and uh, yeah so again that's another place to sort of find some of your data and sort of how it's fixed um, all the other points if I deleted for instance pg one now the only thing left on the screen will be pg 8 everything else will disappear uh, because it's all based off that one so if I just go ahead and delete it uh, you also see those obs if I refresh and rerun as you see nothing's everything's gone it's all based off that one point so um, as we go through and run our our calcs, uh, we can then pull out some of that data uh, and store it somewhere else. And then you can then go and, you know, for instance, save this somewhere else and then run it into another job or send it out to your controllers or whatever else you need to do. All right, let's moving forward. Um, let's have a quick squeeze at the Travis adjustment. Um, so if we go to our, our standard home tab, um, yeah, has all our normal home uh, functions. Next to that, we have survey. And in our survey tab, we have, all in our optical section, we have adjust Travis. So if you click adjust Travis, it'll come up with the adjust Travis pane. Uh, to be able to, to, to start uh, a Travis, we have to give it a name. And in this case, I'm gonna call it uh, Travis one, uh, and I'm gonna click create. TBC will, will be able to read in the data from that one dot job file and, and give you an, a list of options that could be your starting station. Now in this case, the, the only option that I have for my starting station was station one and how I've done the survey. So I've, I've started on station one, I've sighted two to the backside of one, and then I've turned uh, in station PJ02. And then likewise, Pete started at two, Backsided PG01, turned PG03, and and sort of went on from there. Um, so there's no real way of being able to go and start on, for instance, PG08, and I want to you know traverse from there. No, no, you have to sort of start from where you sort of started from. Um, so your traverse methodology in the field is crucial to being able to make sure that this will work when you come in and do this. Um, so you know old school um, traversing conventions um, will still need to be uh, applied when performing these traverses. So our starting station was one and we know that. So we're going to click the little blue tab uh, off to the right hand side and that will then lock that in as station. And then we've gone from there. Okay, where have we gone to? PGO2. I've done that. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you then click the add button to the right hand side. It then adds that through. It'll then start linking them together with a red um, a red line and it'll start to draw this around the entire Travis as we move forward. Uh, so if I, for instance, said, yeah, PG03, I'm happy with that. Yes, that's where I, I, that's definitely where I went. I want to go that way. It then will autofill and, and understand how I've done the survey and what I've done and when. Uh, and then it'll go, okay, what do you want to do now? Uh, do you want to, what, which observation do you want to use? Now, uh, the observations I've actually gone out there and when I did the survey, I, 
I stored multiple points uh, just so I could have a, a, a difference between the two. Um, and in a, a different part of the, the training modules we were looking, um, we have looked at the the misclose that I got between those points. Uh, for instance, on one, I got eight, eight millimeters uh, and then my closing line between PGO one and, and, and one was uh, eight seconds. So it, I've merged them together and now it's looking at which which station line do I want to use? Do I want to use the S9 or the S10 uh, observation line? Now, these these two are practically the same. Um, so I'm just going to use S9 and then I click add. And what it's going to do is just add that data in and it's finished off the Travis. Now, obviously nothing else, no other data, no other way of going. There's only one loop there and that's all we can do. Um, from there, we can, we move further down and we look at how our, our single backsite um, sort of works. What did we use? We, we can say what we what a set is our backsite. So do we want to use one or do we want to use two? Uh, set one, I know that zero. Um, ending station, what's the ending station? It is back to um, one again. And we know that it's meant to be 180 degrees. Uh, so we, we leave that data in there. Now in our settings, this is the, the important part, how the adjustments actually going to be performed. The adjusting angles. Now we can have it set to three options, no adjustment at all. We want to keep them as they are. We're happy with the angles we turned. We can have it set to an equal proportioning, whereas every angle through the entire Travis will be provided with the same amount of um, error depending upon their degree and distance um, and so on. Or we can have it set to a, a, a proportional to distance. So, you know, obviously if I've got uh, three seconds, well, let's make it a little bit larger. Let's say I've got one minute, uh, obviously over 100, I've got 30 mil, you know, over a kilometre, 300 mil, like do I want to make that proportional or not? Um, that's where you would set the your proportional to distance. Uh, I myself run proportional to distance because I don't want to propagate error out and I want every don't want to apply the same equal um, angle adjustment to everything. Um, so I run through that. Same with the vertical, I want to do the same thing. Now adjusting the horizontal position and the horizontal distance or the distances. Uh, this will look at whether or not you want to apply and say that the angles are actually greater than the distances. So transit looks at whether or not you want to say that the angles are actually better than the distances. So we'll adopt them first and then we'll sort of adjust everything out a little bit later. Uh, or you can do compass about it and say, well, no, they both are actually about the same uh, and they're fairly consistent. So we'll look at them as a whole and uh, deal with that. So again, I know that nowadays we can measure quite well with uh, these new EDMs. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, we can measure angles better than distances nowadays. It's actually the other way around. We measure distances better than we can measure angles. Um, so I, I, I'll keep that at um, Bowditch and um, have the distances adjusted as they need to be. Uh, modes, adjusting manually or have it automatically. So as you change things through the, the project, you can, the ways you change things through the dot .job or the total station editor, you can have it automatically adjust the data back out uh, or you can have it only manual. Um, so in this case, leave it as manual. Um, I would leave it as manual because when I complete something, I know that it's there and it's fixed and it's never going to change um, and that I physically will have to change it. You don't want to have to go out there and you tweak something accidentally and the whole lot moves. Um, so yeah, and then do I want to enable the Travis or not? You can say yes or no. Uh, enabling it will, will show up with the Travis as a, as a purple purple um, purple loop, uh, whereas disabling it will still perform the Travis, it'll still create the Travis, but it'll turn it off and you won't be able to see it as that loop. Um, but well, you know, six one after the other. In the end, I'll disable it before I perform the next part. So, and I'll just click apply. Now, before I click apply, I could have come up here um, and gone to preview results. Now this is a look at how the, the project's actually going to fall out, how everything's done. Now how, how have I done it? How do I want my settings to be set up? What are my stationing? And uh, before before the adjustment, what I got. So I've got 10 seconds um, and my Eastings and, and Northings were 11 by 3. So yeah, it's a fair job. It's horizontal distance is 11 mil. 
uh, there's all my positioning. So after the angle adjustment, how things fall out. So Eastings, Northings, and you know, I've got nine mil now after the angles. So I did pretty well on the angles. And then after the distancing um, and how it sort of falls out. Now, I've already clicked apply. So that's already in there and it's already applied. You can come up to the top of your pane and you'll have a uh, disable Travis or you can go to your Travis adjustment report. If you click your Travis adjustment report and new window will open, and you will see um, some pre-fill information. Uh, so obviously I've got uh, a whole bunch in my template already of where I am and uh, who I am. And as we move sort of further down through the adjustment report, we look at again, those same same information we're seeing in the, the preview results. This is just the, the formal, uh, formal report of the, the data, uh, horizontal position uh, before, after. Again, moving through uh, our results, what points were fixed obviously point number one was fixed everything else was was adjusted from there and you know how everything else has sort of fall, fallen out uh, vertical adjustment did pretty well everything down the the tail end pj six and seven obviously they moved by three mil so again not a um not a bad not a bad role um and again a little pre pretty picture to to show you with that loop now that is that's the travis adjustment and again, it's one loop at a time, uh, looking at each individual. So if, uh, I had a survey that I did um, back at a previous company and, and it was a very, uh, very large three kilometers by three kilometer Travis with multiple inter interlinking uh, Travises between them. Um, and I can tell you, it probably would be a little bit of a pain to do it this way, but um, it can be done. You just have to make sure Travis methodology is correct to, to make it work. Now moving forward, let's jump into network adjustments. So I'm just gonna close out of that tab uh, and then close out of our report. Uh, our Travis is set up here as our purple, uh, purple loop. The actual points now have, have been converted for from a, um, just a, a, a radial based point to or a, an observation point based off point PJO one have actually now been given their own adjusted um, coordinate point. So that data can then be selected and then exported um, if you wanted to, to do what you need to do with it um, and, and moving on from there. All right, so let's move on to our network adjustment. Um, I'll just go into Travis Networks and disable, okay. So you see everything sort of reverted back to the way it was before we started. So again, in our survey tab, uh, if we move further along uh, into the, the next grouping, we have our network and we have adjust network. So we click that, it'll open up and we'll see that we have uh, two little tabs at the top, constraints and weightings. Both of them will be, be empty at the moment. And then at the bottom, we have our azimuth constraint um, and our horizontal distance constraint, if you wanted to add one of them. Uh, to create a fixed coordinate, you need to have your, your survey points as a survey control quality point before it will be able to be auto-filled into the fixed coordinate section. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do that. Uh, for PGO1, uh, I'm going to select that point. You can create a new and add a new coordinate if you want and just change it, um, change the weightings, or you can go into your grid, so go into your actual point, find your point, go to your Eastings and Northings, and then change it out through here. So this here will be our control quality for, um, and yeah, mapping quality if you've gone out and done some mapping work, but we'll set it all to control. And there it is. And you can see it's, it's automatically appeared in our fixed coordinates. So I wanted to perform a minimally constrained Travis. I'm not gonna constrain anything off to um, other than this one point, because I wanna see how everything else falls out initially um, before I add any other points in there. So obviously a fixed one point, I wanna fix it in our two dimensional space and also with an elevation. Now, if you had some GNSS data, you can set ellipsoidal height as your your fixed um, your, your fixed value. But in this in this case, I've only got your elevation, so that's all I've done. 
Now, because I'm only fixing one point uh, and I, I don't want it to sort of swing around um, left and right from that one point, I can tell it that I want to have up the page uh, to PJ01. I'm going to set that as uh, my azimuth constraint. Uh, this is just one way of doing it. Um, so, for instance, uh, set my azimuth constraint. You can physically select it on the screen if you want and it auto fills, or you can type it in and then it will automatically pre fill the value between those two points. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click adjust. The next window that pops up is asking you about those flags. Now, have you seen them? Do you know about them? Yes, no. Um, and do you want to resolve them? Currently, they're unresolved because I've done nothing with them. But at the same time, is I'm happy with, the, with their results. So I'm not going to change them. You click yes. And it's come through and it's already passed. Now that's that's because the the information that I provided the project settings sits into and sits with the actual observations and the reliability of the observations. Now um, I will go and, and make this fail in a second uh, and show you what that would look like. Uh, but so here we've already passed. Um, we've got 94 degrees of freedom. So a few redundancies there, and I've got a, re a reference factor of 0.96. So I still have under, I overstated or understated, I've understated what the um, statistics would be for this. So for a S5 Travis with a mini prism um, and just a regular tape, uh, I'm pretty happy with those results. So I'm happy that I that I uh, I've been able to to sit that. So let's go through and now make this thing fail. Um, and so you can see what it looks like. So the top of your, project, your actual adjust pane, uh, you have the little cog, which will take you to your project settings. Total station, so this is these settings that I, I set originally, uh, horizontal angle of three and vertical angle of three seconds, and then my one by two. So let's, let's blow this uh, down to one second and so I'm gonna just constrain it further and say that I've measured measured better than I actually, um, well, the instrument measures better than it actually does, and I'll leave that as the same. Their instrument centering and, and so on, you can, again, blow that out, and I could say that my instrument setting was at three mil. Um, that will also make my reference factor go up. Um, so it sort of depends on what you're setting. So you may have to tweak and do a few iterations of being able to work out what, what might be the best thing to look at. Um, but in this case, we'll just sort of blow out our angles and sort of show you what it looks like. So I click OK and then click Readjust. Yes, um, it'll go through and it's still passed. Oh, well, I'll go even further then. Um, I'll make, I will blow these out. And click OK, adjust. OK, there we go. So I've made it fail. Um, and you can see the reference factor has now jumped down to 0.71. So it's actually gone down, saying that I've, again, understated the, the values. And um, you know, it comes up with that. If you click the little, little button at the top of your screen uh, or top, top of the tab, you can go into the adjustment report and sort of have a look at how it's done the adjustment uh, and just quickly filtering through through this. So this is just the settings that were pre-set up in the project settings, the statistics and how it's sort of gone through and done it. Uh, so our a priori uh, scale factor, which is the, the, the scalar applied after. We haven't changed that, we haven't done that. I'll show you that in a second. Um, how much our redundancies are for each one of those, and then what our reference factors were for our horizontal angle obs. So again, I've um, done much better than I thought I would have. The vertical angles, they've blown out a little. So I, I could say that I've done a, um, haven't done as well there, uh, and so on and so forth. Fixed coordinates, fixed azimuth, uh, what the adjusted, um, grid coordinates would look like and how much they've all moved by. So you can sort of see down here, um, five is moved by 11 mil um, to the east and, and so on and so forth. Again, move it a little bit further down. We start seeing some of these 
uh, sort of red flagged observations. So you can see here I've, I've got one observation which um, sits outside the standardized residual of three, um, which is sitting at uh, negative four. So it's, it's much higher than it needs to be. Uh, so that there is obviously red flagged by the program uh, to say, okay, there's, not, there's something here that's not quite right. Um, probably find that your observation is a little bit out. Um, so you have, may have to go back and look at that, tweak it, uh, and disable an observation. Maybe there's one one observation there. This observation, for instance, is out, um, but the one below it, it's still fairly high, but it's not red flagged. I still would be concerned with that value, and it could be how I've done that, that Travis. So that's from four to eight. So if I click that, um, and I'm just going to minimise that window now. If I click that, it'll bring up that observation line. Now it's it's going from one side of the Travis to the other is just a random brace. I can disable that because I've got other redundancies, um, and then um, you know be able to continue on my merry way. So in project settings, it's already selected. You can click disable, um, keep the adjustment, and sort of keep going through there um, as as they sort of fall out. Going back to having a, look, a bit more of a look at these values now, the what you're more, more concerned about would be these values down here, what the actual horizontal angle reading was um, from, from one point to the other. So that will be from your, your uh, back site through to the foresight. So you're interested in knowing that these are around the same. You don't want them to be too, too much higher than what they need to be. Um, yeah, so there's only that one observation. Anyway, that's the basis of the, the network adjustment report. So I'll close that out. Um, now, because this, this network adjustment has failed um, and I'm, you know, the values that I've set, say I'm, I say I'm confident with them. I know that the standard errors are, are correct and, and my centering was, was, you know, I'm happy with it. You can then go back through and then apply the a priori scalar in the weighting. Um, section. So this is, you know, if you're for those uh, least squares nerds, um, you'd be, be looking at uh, applying that weighted G value um, across the, uh, the, the, uh, the matrix. So you're applying that scalar matrix um, in there. Uh, so what we're looking for here is which has the highest reference factor so we're looking at, for instance, your vertical angle has the highest reference factor, uh, and then which one has the highest redundancies? Um, so again, in this in this fact, the vertical angle has 1.05, and then the redundancy being 33.98. Uh, I, will, for instance, would go through and then select that one first, and and click the little star. So this little star here will apply that scalar, uh, multiply that scalar out, um, and then you click adjust again and it'll go through and redo the adjustment. And in several look at our results, it's still failed, we've still blown it out. So it, it's going the wrong way. So this is already telling me that I've still got something in my, my project settings that's still not 100%. Uh, I, I need, to, need to fix those settings. So again, if I went back to my weighting and I applied uh, my horizontal angles just for actually you know, do slope distances. So the next one down in the value 0.47 and then 31 per, uh, value for redundancy. Click that, adjust, click yes, and then go results. And then you still, we're now going back the other way. Now, that's the process if, if you had your project settings correct and you knew that they were, were within um, where you sort of wanted them to be. Now, Ideally, a reference factor of greater than one, so we're looking one upwards to you know three to ten to whatever as a whole number. Uh, that would be where you'd be wanting to sort of jump into your weighting and, and start applying that. Now, if it's below, as we see here, you will want to actually apply it or not apply it and go back to your project settings and have a bit of a look at what you've done. So I'm going to go back into my project settings and I'm going to fix this up so that it comes back to what it needs to be. Um, Three, three, and one. Ooh. Actually, no, make it, make it, yeah, one. That'd be okay. And adjust. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, let's clear these. So you, if you've gone through and done an adjustment and you want to reset everything up the top, there's a, a way of resetting all your, your weightings back to one. Uh, and so I've just clicked and uh, applied that and I'm going to adjust that again and click yes and reprocess it. And this will be where we can sort of see I've passed and I've still understated. Um, but you can then go through and, and apply these. I wouldn't, wouldn't be applying it. I'm happy with those results and would be willing to, to sort of move forward on the adjustment. Uh, once you've completed that and you're happy with it, you click OK. Um, each one of these points now will show up with your error ellipse and, and everything else. Obviously, waiting off one point higher down on the, the eastern side. These points have now been provided an adjusted grid coordinate. Um, and again, the, the, the delta or the, the bearing and distance between each one of the points, so for instance, PGO4 to PGO7, uh, will vary slightly to the observations that are here in green. Uh, so once you finish with those observations, you can then turn them off and don't get confused with the actual OBS. Uh, your bearing and distance now is between the point to point. Um, so that, that's, this is just observation data. Uh, you can export this, this data if you'd like to, to send it out. Um, and you can go back to your home tab, go to select point for instance, um, and be able to export anything that's got horizontal qualities of adjusted and fixed for instance, and send them out somewhere else. So if you wanna do your least squares in one package and then send it off to, a, to another program or another, um, uh, another project, you can do so by doing this. Um, and you can sort of set up how you want it to be done. Like a giga pie and an exporter, um, how you want it to be done. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to stop there. I think I've um, gone on long enough. Uh, and what I might do is pass over to to the floor. If there's any questions, if you've got any uh, anything you'd like to ask, um, we can sort of move move into to looking at um, some of your questions. So what we might do is just remove. Um, all right, so everyone's unmuted. So if you wanted to have a chat, you can, um, or if you really want to, you can sort of put a bit of an IM down in the down in the pane. So if you if anybody wants to to type away, they can. Um, so if there's any questions, let us know. Um, details on the screen if you want to sort of get in contact with us after to sort of see uh, if there's anything I can help you with. All right. Well, looks of it, there's uh, there's no questions. It looks like people are already already signing out. So I might might cut it cut it off there. Um, yeah. Please send me an email if you've got any questions. And um, this video will be posted for uh, up on YouTube for everyone to have a look at. So I hope uh, everyone has a good afternoon and a good day.